Erev Tov Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, and these titles on these articles don't look very pleasant, that's for sure. This is coming from uh, the newspaper Express uh, out of uh, England there, and of course a lot of times considered to be, um, I don't know what you would call it, but but... Maybe not always the most reliable source, but nonetheless, I wanted to bring this to your attention because there is a reliable source we're going to look at in just a minute that seems to be that war may very well be imminent uh, by the United States there in Syria, which will no doubt draw Russia into this conflict. A number of things that are happening today, including that of uh, President Bashar al-Assad, his wife, Amza, speaking out for the first time in eight years about this war uh, also. And that's another issue we might look at to say that they know that it's at the very last hour uh, and they have rejected all claims for being able to have, uh, make asylum and leave. Uh, her and her husband both have believed that they have stood there by the Syrian people from the very beginning and they're not going to change their stance at this point. Anyway, U.S. citizens warned to prepare for nuclear war over claims attack uh, warning upgrade. This is the U.S. could be edging ever closer to nuclear war with Russia after upgrading its attack defense readiness it has been claimed. Now, they're going to quote what they call the uh, DEFCON warning system, but it's considered to be the conspiracy theorist uh, warning system that most of us go to. Uh, I don't know if it's DEFCON.com or, Def or, or which particular dot they may be on DEFCON's warning system, but it says DEFCON is an alert system used by the U.S. military to indicate the current threat of nuclear war. Of course, being that there are five stages, the article goes into uh, DEFCON 3 is the migrant, excuse me, Def, at, at the DEFCON 3 level, which is what DEFCON's warning system is bringing out right now, is that there is a pretty much an imminent threat of war. Now, the official government website, from what I understand, is still at a DEFCON Five. Uh, it is a conspiracy theories page that does the DEFCON reporting that has us at a three right now and possibly upgrading to a two before much longer. But it considers, uh, uh, according to the article, says, but conspiracy theorists have warned the threat has secretly been upgraded to levels of DEFCON 3, meaning the U.S. could mobilize troops in as little as 15 minutes. All right, now. You can take a look at the article here. We'll have it posted here in the links below. But I want to kind of move on from that instead of just really hanging around on this article. And I want to share with you another article from the same uh, express.co.uk. It says, U.S. nuclear war fears. Vladimir Putin warns Americans are impending uh, and grave danger. Uh, Vladimir Putin has warned we are in grave danger as he accused the United States of lying over its nuclear capabilities and revealed Russia continues to develop new generation warfare. Uh, that's what uh, this is all about right here. It says the Russian president issued the chilling warning to a group of journalists as he attempted to explain the reasons behind his country's actions in recent months. Uh, maintaining a steely exterior, Mr. Putin discussed the potential start of a second Cold War and warned the world's in grave danger. He said major global conflicts have been of have been avoided in the past few decades due to geostrategic balance of power, which used to exist. The suit the two super nuclear powers essentially agreed to stop producing both offensively uh, weaponry as well as defensive weaponry. Uh, that's what he says here is. It's not in my nature to scold someone, but when the United States unilaterally withdrew from the anti-ballistic missile treaty in 1972, they delivered a colossal blow to the entire system of international security. That was the first blow when it comes to assessing the strategic balance of power in the world. At that time, in 2002, I said we will not be developing such systems also because A, it is ex very expensive, and B, we aren't sure yet how they will work for the Americans. Mr. Putin revealed how Russia has gone on to develop new weapons in response to continuing American developments. He accused the U.S. of rejecting Russian deals to cease weapon production and insisted Russia can pinpoint when the U.S. will build a new missile that will directly threaten his country. 
This is what he goes on to in this article here, and of course also the video here that is actually right here on your screen, um, where he spoke about these things here uh, to this meeting of journalists right here. Uh, but the thing is, though, this is only a tip of the iceberg, you might say, from what we are seeing that, uh, as far as coming out in uh, mainstream media. It is more so the article that came out today on The Guardian that has really concerned me the most. It says, U.S. and U.K. reject Russian offer of Syria airstrikes pause. This is where Russia has offered an eight hour of cessation of hostilities in order to allow humanitarian aid to come in to the people of eastern Aleppo. Uh, but in good faith, they have agreed to, to also in, bring the pause about a day earlier to bring down that hostility environment uh, where it would last a little bit longer. But it says here in the article, West demands credible and durable ceasefire for Aleppo as basis for talks as U.S. calls proposal, speaking about the Russian proposal for the eight-hour ceasefire, too little, too late. That's when you know there's big issues ahead. For the United States and Britain to say the proposal by Russia is too little, too late, concerns me that they're actually planning on going ahead with their attacks on the Syrian government inside of uh, Syria there, which inevitably will draw Russia into the conflict unless for some reason Russia changes. It doesn't look like Russia's backing down either because Russia, besides already a quite a few number of uh, ships there in the region, they are also sending more ships to the region, including their sole aircraft carrier. And, uh, but anyway, it says the U.S. and U.K. have rejected a Russian and Syrian offer of a temporary pause on airstrikes in Aleppo as the basis for reopening talks, saying there has to be a credible and durable ceasefire that should initially last as long as 48 hours. Moscow had announced a temporary halt in the military push ahead of a planned eight-hour humanitarian pause on Thursday designed to give rebels and militants and the injured a chance to leave the city. The U.S. State Department said Russian offer was too little, too late, and the U.N. humanitarian spokesman said that the relief workers needed longer than eight hours to help extricate the injured. Moscow announced on Tuesday the Russians and Syrian warplanes had halted their bombardment on the rebel-held districts of the city. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Soigu said the early halting of the airstrikes is necessary to declare corridors and prepare for the evacuation of the ill and wounded from the eastern part of Aleppo. So in reality, they are, they are going to be getting the timeline in which the, the West is claiming. But it really seems, quite frankly, that the United States and Britain just really doesn't give a flip. They want to be able to use their bombs on Syria one way or the other. This is also seems to be what has prompted uh, Syrian's first lady, Amza al-Assad, uh, to speak about this asylum that is going on as well. Uh, she was in an interview by Russian Channel 24, uh, Russia 24, uh, I'm assuming it was today that she was interviewed. And uh, in her interview there, she actually speaks about uh, the children. Um, uh, let's see if we actually have a clip of that. I don't have a clip of it here. I did listen to the clip that she speaks there about her children there. She's been there. Uh, of course, she got married to uh, Bashar al-Assad in the year 2000. Uh, for the last eight years, she's been in Syria. They met, of course, in Britain, where she grew up. Uh, she speaks both fluent English as well as uh, Arabic uh, uh, as well. But at any rate, there she accused the West of always using propaganda against the Syrian government, and especially when it comes to the children. She said the West always uh, discriminates, is a good word I think should be used, discriminates on uh, the children based on what the parents believe. And as she brought out to the reporter that was asking her the questions in the interview, she said the children are children regardless of what their parents' religious views are, view or what their political views are. All these children that are dying in this 
this war is a tragedy. Um, and so I, I thought it was kind of interesting because this is the first interview she's done in about, I don't know, five years or so, something like that, maybe six years since she's actually done a public interview before. And to me, it seems that the reason why she is doing the interview now is because of the desperate situation uh, when it looks like at any moment now, the United States and their allies may indeed strike Syria. And I have a feeling if that does come to fruition, it is going to be an overwhelming uh, uh, amount of force. And it also definitely may spark a third world war. Um, and one thing I want to take you to here, give me just one second here. I didn't have it planned, so give me one second. I want to bring something up to your attention.